Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. Today I wanted to start the first episode of a series I want to do called Why I Wear and I wanted to make this series because I talk a lot about attaching to larger sensibilities and philosophies and how to develop your personal style but I don't think I've ever gone into very deep explanation. So the first episode is going to be based on Rick Owens um, and I'm going to explain in depth why I chose Rick Owens um, and I think it's like one of the easiest ones for me to talk about. People have gathered together to celebrate beauty and celebrating beauty in a communal moment. That's one of the best things in life. Um, I have to preface this episode by saying though, it's not that serious. Much like Rick, this is not a manifesto. It's a suggestion. This is something I'm putting out there, even though it's a labor intensive video that will involve editing and, you know, conceptualizing things deeply. It's not that serious. I don't think anybody else has to attach to this designer the way that I do. And when I do, it's not like I center my life in on these concepts. It's something, it's like watching a really good movie and you're like, I love that movie from my childhood. And then you like carry that with you through life. That's kind of more what it is for me. It's not like I wake up every day and like eat, sleep, breathe Rick. Like I'm not drinking the Rick Owens water and you know, baptizing myself in it as much as I am, you know, something that I've built up an understanding of over time. So I'm not going to be doing this like from an educational perspective as much as I am sharing things that are relevant to why I attach to Rick Owens fashion brand. I read so many articles where like it's half and half, it's split down the middle, I think they're like he's the dark prince, the, the king of dark, gothic, negative, evil, underworld, spiritual, grim storytelling. I'm like, I really feel like almost, I would say like a lot of his women's wear collections are actually really, really positive and bright and lightweight and spirited. I think Queen, Fall Winter 2004, I think Scorpio, they're always really bright. Uh, there's tons of different hues. There is like always a range of shape and um, movement and honoring the body is really like positive and fun and lightweight ways and i do feel like there's a lot more range to his his design process than people give him credit for um and i think that that is him infusing his positivity and his energy regardless i think him sharing what he feels and what he believes and some things that are true and valuable to him are his positive energy i think even if the collection is really dark and seems evil and grim and gothic and sad and solipsistic and stuff like that and um i, I think the the misery and sadness that people interpret in his work in my opinion is still an expression of his joy his delight i would say even with being a, a person on earth and having the opportunity to say what he wants to say and to story tell because what are you gonna do if not like be yourself and say what you want to say i think that that is him expressing his joy he says dancing is one of the purest simplest expressions of joy so he's known for like cutting a rug a bit for the girls i think that's something i really relate to like it's not perfect it's not like i was gonna make this video and be like and this is why rick owens is a perfect person he's never hurt anybody's feelings he's never done anything wrong and he's just a hero and a god amongst people i think that that wouldn't be relatable and i think it is relatable that he has this really seemingly complex a relationship with himself and other people and his design process it isn't simple and I, I wouldn't want it to be like I don't necessarily connect the most with collections from designers that feel really simple and like they're saying the exact right thing and they've always said the exact right thing and they've always spoken directly to my sensibilities and expectations as an insecure consumer who just wants to see the perfect world and the perfect girl and I just really really want to be her and I want to sparkle and I want to glitter and my dreams come true like I do not that does not feel real to me that doesn't feel valuable to me as a consumer it never has like maybe since I was in like first grade or something and maybe I don't even think it did then like I, I've always yeah, felt a lot of uh, value in people who can express like the truth the complicated truth the ugly truth and see that that's the value in self-expression is telling the truth and saying what you want to say and even if it's your truth at that moment and it's not you revealing everything about how you feel and who you are as a person and your desires and everything that's your truth in the moment and I think that complication is um, what I really, really value in his design. I think it's why I like Todd Salons uh, as a filmmaker. I think it's why I like um, the musicians that I like. So here's a little biography if you don't know a lot about Rick Owens. His name is Richard Owens. He's a Scorpio. He was raised by a social worker and a school teacher and his mom was a seamstress. His dad was really, really conservative and strict. Didn't get to watch television until he was 16. I think it's an interesting perspective, especially for someone who went to Catholic school in such a conservative context and I think it really really obviously affects his design process. He describes himself as a reaction to his father's strictness 
and I feel the same way about my like slightly conservative upbringing. I think that having that really really strict sensibility but with this like lax free cultural worldview I think it can make for productive relationships with art. I also think it's really telling that he only had access to classical literature and music and not mainstream media um, and then in his adult life lived a kind of debaucherous on the edge lifestyle and I think that that also shows up in his design sensibilities which I also really really attach to. I also like that he was described as like courtly but raw. I think there's something really romantic about those two ends of the spectrum as a person and in art and in design. So he went to Catholic school and he got bullied really viciously. He's this queer like kid um, and he describes it as like kind of disturbing to imagine putting like a sweet innocent child in such a hostile negative environment which I think again shapes some of his design sensibilities. Um, he said he was thin-skinned and sensitive and I really I relate to that but I think he has so much strength now as an adult. So he goes to art school for two years. He drops out because he said he didn't feel like he had the mental fortitude to be in art school and instead he opted for something more practical uh, using his technical skills as a pattern maker instead and so he worked and like essentially made knockoffs for a while and on his technical skills he obviously like I said he cuts his own garments. He says you can't convincingly get abstract until you really understand the fundamentals and you can't start distorting things until you kind of know what you're doing and worked for his now wife Michelle um, he talks about how during like his younger years he would kind of like burn the candle at both ends and live this really extreme self-destructive lifestyle that included a lot of like binge like ex excessive living in general and he was just like I don't care I'm gonna live like that I'm gonna burn out like get done what I need to get done and tr be true to myself and that's about it and um, I don't think that I was close to or felt myself as a result of burning out from partying and going out but I do relate a lot to burning the candle at both ends um, in direct response to hostility growing up and strict upbringings and um, conservative upbringings and um, feeling like you can't be yourself when you're younger and then feeling like you have to like explode when you're a little older and then seeing the effect on you it has on you and working to rebuild yourself after and I think that that is also uh, a bright shout that exists across his design. He said that he experienced a lot of ostracization and hostility and felt like an outsider in a small town. He acted out of fear in the self-destructive lifestyle but I like that he says in an interview like you grow out of it. I do respect that that is his perspective on his experience. You grow out of it. He has a very like moving on kind of attitude it seems about his life and I think I do too. And taking what you experienced to rebuild yourself and construct a new reality to honor and bring dignity to your life and the experience of life. I think that that's really valuable and I see that throughout his design process and I think that that's why it resonates so much with me. His attitude and response to his experiences is not um, necessarily a universal way of, of perceiving them. The way that he was bullied and the way that he describes his experiences, he says like he could have come to school and it could have been like a really bad situation where he came to school like you guys are bullying me or tormenting me, my life is terrible, I'm gonna inflict harm on all of you and instead he chooses to do the opposite and create, use his energy to share with other people and allow other people to share themselves and connect to other people, like to bring connectivity instead of destruction between himself and other people, I just think it's really valuable. There are a lot of people who have terrible experiences, like I said, who kind of, I don't wanna say get jaded, but feel downtrodden by their experiences and like stuck and stifled by them and then live in this persecutory complex for the rest of their lives, it seems. Everything is just them being a victim and everything is, I have. To, I wish I could have had better and I wish people would have treated me better and I wish I would have been better and they give themselves no grace and they give other people no grace and they can't honor and value the work that they've done, the connections that they've made, the communities that they're a part of. And I think that, that is like devaluing your experience on earth as a person who even knows what this is. And I think like the least we can do is like honor and value, like whatever the heck this is by being like that, I give myself grace. I give other people grace. And it was a mistake that I did something 
and it wasn't the right way to live and it wasn't the best for me but I had to do it to get to where I am and I honor that experience like and I move forward with it I look back on it I adapt to the present and I move forward with it I'm not saying this to be rude because I think everybody's allowed to have their own perspectives on their experience and time here and I understand that it also is connected to people's like relationship with their mental health but I really really do not find people are very congruent with me when they feel destroyed by their past and want to like magnetize negative experiences to them to punish themselves for the past and I think that especially as it relates to religion and the expectation in a lot of people's religion that that's what they should do is punish themselves for their past and attach to negative experiences because of their past and torture themselves with their past and their mistakes and their failures. I just don't relate to that at all. I think that you should acknowledge your past, be accountable for your past and work to change and adapt that those experiences for reality now in the present to the best of your ability to construct a new and better reality. I don't like being around people that are like, woe is me, I'm so tortured, I have the hardest life in the world, and just want to repeat that every day and torture themselves with that. It is true, life is extremely, extremely hard, especially for people who have harder lives than me, but it doesn't, it isn't congruent to me to not want to make good of that subjectivity. Instead of allowing the garment to control and overpower the wearer, you have kind of your own storytelling experience in his work. And I find that's the case. I feel like that's the case with me. I think everybody wears Rick Owens clothes differently. And I think it allows you to do your own storytelling, which is like your own liberation in his storytelling toward his liberation. And I think giving people the chance to say what they want to say when they get dressed while they're aligning with this like cult based and cult looking very religious looking fashion brand i think it's so intelligent and fun and i like the balance of it that you're like i am wearing rick owens it is identifiable as rick owens because his codes are so strict in his design but i feel like everybody makes it their own that you're also a part of the storytelling he's told his story now you tell yours when you're wearing it um i also like that he said he doesn't want to make these ultra constrictive designs that like move and shape and reshape the body where you're like propped up by the design and instead he wants to work around the body as it exists. Um, again, to me that goes back to honoring and bring dignity to your designs and your customer and your wearer that you don't feel like the person needs to change, which is again, an interesting balance between strictness and freedom and you know, liberati liberatory perspective on design and also like, strict uh, perspective on design which I think comes from his technical skill as pattern maker. He understands how to make clothes so he knows how to make clothes that can allow you to be you and do you in them instead of being like well this is the only way it has to be and it has to look like this and like having these really strict perceptions. I think that can come from limited knowledge about patterning and limited knowledge about like the human body and the human form. I think because he knows so much he's able to design things that encase the body beautifully but also freely. Um, and can tell the story and create shape and have power and resonance without um, controlling the person. Yeah, he works for Michelle, he marries Michelle, and then he talks about how once they were married he would make sure to like lead essentially with the fact that he's bisexual and so that people couldn't be like whispering to Michelle or whispering behind his back like you know Rick is gay, like you know Rick Owens is gay. He's like I, I'm gonna say it whatever, I'm just gonna say it first, like this is who I am and I don't need people like you know making it into something to, that they can try to use against me or use to embarrass me like so then I said it so now you have nothing to say and I think that that is a really powerful exercise in control and freedom at the same time I'm gonna control your perception of me and that you don't get to try to choose to embarrass me because I'm freely expressing that this is who I am and I think that that balance between uh, restriction and liberation is really consistent throughout his design process and I think it's something that really resonates with me because I feel similarly and also it's a part of like the way that I get dressed physically and also like emotionally if that makes sense. I'm projecting, I feel like Michelle balances him and I think that it's good to have somebody who's very flexible and acts on their intrinsic like impulses and balance that with somebody who has really really strict regimen, regimented like lifestyle um, and expectations of themselves and others because 
being inflexible has value for you in my opinion like being inflexible like being like I need to wake up I need to exercise at a certain time I need to go get coffee even if I'm tired I need to start working as a freelance like that's my like thing I need to start working as a freelancer even if I don't want to that kind of like inflexibility instead of being like oh I'm gonna give myself a day off it can be really really great for productivity and for work and um, for accomplishments and things like that but having some degree of flexibility especially with other people and the ability to give yourself grace are really really essential so I think it's interesting and I also have said before I love uh, romantic duos and I love duos in fashion I said and like teams and collaborative efforts in fashion so much I just love the work that comes from that like synergistic relationship it seems okay so now I'm gonna talk about the personal sensibilities that he seems to have shared in interviews over the years that resonate with me and allow me to connect with his brand identity um, in getting myself dressed every day staying true to myself and doing my thing which could be repetitive to a lot of people. Reduction, reduction, reduction. And I think reduction uh, comes as a result of having an editing eye and honoring the fact that you appreciated life enough to share yourself, storytelling, but to storytell openly and share your, your heart and your energy with other people and give them the power to do the same in their everyday lives. And then to look back on that and see that that had value instead of running away from it and um, working to destroy your past self i think that, that is a really like honorable way of like valuing your your past your present and your future i get criticized for it a lot oh it's rick it's uh, the rick owens look it's the same old thing i think it's great actually i mean that i've created like some kind of identity or some kind of established some kind of aesthetic um i was talking about when i was reading the dissertation about memory and nostalgia and fashion, how they talk about the divestment ritual that happens when people are getting dressed and working to construct a new identity for themselves, uh, where they, they want to get rid of all their old clothes because they want get to ri get rid of their past selves and they don't like their past selves and they probably don't like their present selves or future selves because they're so invested in like deleting the past and not valuing it and not wanting to look back on it and wanting to eliminate it and create themselves as like commodities in the context of capitalism and i think it's really really interesting that rick owens revives and edits his house codes i feel like all day in his head based on reading interviews he's like that had value we're gonna twist it a little bit like that and his collections have very like similar sensibilities all of the time and they are uh, expanded on really beautifully and thoughtfully but in a way again that honors and brings dignity to the past collections it doesn't seem like he's just making new things to see what trends he can put on the runway and sell it to people he's telling his story he's editing and modifying his story and adapting it to where he is in life it seems and what he wants to say which I know seems like an obvious thing for designers to do but that is not what designers do because fashion is a business it's very risky to be so consistent and have such a strong brand identity especially as such a subversive uh, designer it's very risky to do that because who's to say anybody's going to attach to it and it's going to resonate in the first place let alone that it's going to have meaning to people over time where you are personally in life rather than just reflecting the interests of your audience as like business people uh, to speaking to customers you know I think it's very beautiful and it's very human of him to be like this is what I did in the past this is who I was in the past this is what I wanted to say in the past and this is how I want to adapt that to where I am now he's doing these like slight edits to you know those those um, experiences and then sharing them as energy and I think that that's really beautiful. I also like that he values spontaneity and resourcefulness and I think that that goes into him working to avoid the manufactured appearance of beauty and constructing beauty in relationship with mainstream standards and expectations. It doesn't seem like he takes things as seriously as people think. Like that's why I said at the beginning of this, like this is serious to me and like beautiful to me, but also just like projecting and this is just conjecture. Like I, this is all my source, I made it up. And I think that that's really valuable because I feel the same way. I don't know, I think that's like what makes his work kind of charming, that sometimes it's silly. And, and if he was taking himself super seriously designing clothes like this, I don't think anybody would like care. There's no way you take yourself so, so seriously and that you're being dead serious with all of these references and all these things that you're putting on the runway. Like, I think there's a massive aspect of fun and play and camp and um, 
serious critique and I think that, that comes from like his level of intelligence of always uh, engaging like philosophy and different kinds of literature like I was talking about this on Celebrity Memoir Book Club's Patreon episode like fashion is really serious but it's also not that serious but it also is so serious and it is everything and it is nothing all at once not that it's like thoughtless or that it doesn't matter or that it doesn't have an impact but he talks about how he uses like pentagrams in his designs as camp like a lot of people really think he's like this dark prince of the underworld and like goth and he's trying to put out these messages anti-religious perspective and outlook on religion it seems like even though obviously like critical of its implications it's he says he sees religion as something people made to help each other out um he did a, a shrunken leather jacket with like super long arms and he had cut the armholes kind of high so that the arms looked super long um, and he started seeing it knocked off and he was really delighted by that. I think that's so cute. I also, okay, this is what I was saying about him not taking things so seriously and me too. He said that when he realizes that when his clothes are off the runway and in a store, they won't necessarily be viewed the same way and with the same depth that he infuses into the garment, especially when they're contextualized on the runway. I get that and I like that he, he he's not like, oh my gosh, I, I realize that. He's like, LOL. He's like, I'm not stupid. He's like, I know that when people pick up a shirt, they're not necessarily like, the sensibilities of expression and reduction and control and the bias cut that they're literally like a shirt mm, sure it's giving shirt and i think that that's important like that's what i'm saying about like the realistic nature of um his approach to design and his reality he says he believes that his father injected misanthropy into him it feels like i don't know how to explain this but when your dad can be like really conservative and strict it can make it so that you you see things really realistically and i think he has like the same pragmatism but also you can appreciate and value the world in a really beautiful way because you're like the only thing to do is to move forward. He wants to instill structure and order sometimes, but he also wants people to have freedom. I really do think that his work exemplifies this odd balance and sometimes imbalance of control and restriction versus freedom and carelessness and um, energy to do whatever you want like the spirit of a lot of his collections involves like like dustulator for example is this like angsty free to express yourself kind of collection but the clothes are perfectly made the clothes are perfectly constructed and i think that that is the balance between like control and freedom you are free to express yourself in these perfectly technically constructed garments <laughs> <laughs> that look beautiful and are of beautiful fabrics and are constructed beautifully and drape on the body effectively not just beautifully but effectively and strategically and thoughtfully I think that that's so intelligent I think that that's what I really like about his design and I think that goes back to like the semblance of control and I feel like that's a a sensibility that resonates with me in my personal life like not just in the way that I get dressed but in my personal life I like feel like that's the balance that I try to get through I also like that he said he works to avoid the appearance of um, reinforcing a standard of beauty but again he doesn't do it as a manifesto he's not like we need to disrupt the system like oh my god everybody has to like see beauty the same way that he does and like we need to change everything and everybody has to change to the way that he sees things it's not a manifesto it's a suggestion and I feel the same way about a lot of things in general I feel like a lot of my relationship with fashion is not a manifesto it's just it's like not even a suggestion it's just like this is my opinion that's my opinion like and i'm like and this is what i want to share and i feel like i have the right to share it with the world and i deserve to be able to share it with the world but i'm not saying everybody has to change or adapt to the way that i see the world and i think he thinks the same thing he wants to be able to express himself and do his storytelling but his storytelling doesn't mean now everybody needs to attach to it i think he's happy when it does resonate with other people and impact other people without thinking like now this is how everybody has to be and also what value would it have if everybody you know aligned with that because then it wouldn't be rebelling against anything you know Yoji Yamamoto talks about something similar to this I don't think Yoji Yamamoto expects that the whole world will shift and bend to that he he wants to be in his own marginal lane he talks about how he wants to be in his own marginal lane he doesn't want to be in the mainstream he doesn't align with what's going on in the mainstream and you can understand why he says I wanted exaggerated shapes to mock all of the rules and bigotry that create so much conflict in the world about one of his collections and I think that that perspective is like him trying to story tell about what's going on rather than him trying to signal like we need to disrupt everything like this is going to be the change for the, the whole fashion system and everybody else has to change I think that's really valuable 
Um, so I read an article and it says he doesn't bother with posterity and it seems like his work is about mortality and I think so too but I wrote in my essay like I would argue a lot less obviously and a lot less literally than people think like it's not like dealing with themes of life and death because of gothness and I think even even thinking that he's like this dark underworld kind of person in that way is a little too literal and also ignores the subjectivity of goth culture in the first place, which is that it's about like your own introspection, your own personal introspection and subjective perspective on your experience and time here. And I think, like I said, I feel like this is getting repetitive, but I think that he doesn't bother with posterity and focuses on mortality in that he values joy and storytelling and expression while he's here and doing these bursts of energy and putting them on the runway in order to honor his life and time here he's like it seems like he's like it slays to be alive and i want to say what i want to say while i'm here and share that with other people and that's why he doesn't think so much about like legacy in a conventional way. I said I think that the collections are about exchanging energy while you can to the fullest, not broadly self-expression, but connectivity, community, exchange, spiritual connection, and transcendence through vulnerability and strength at once through storytelling. So it's restraint and constriction, frailty and armor, fluidity, transparency, impermeable armor, um, at once. Construction, deconstruction, reconstruction, building the self, um, deconstructing the ego and things like that. Um, so then he worked and worked and worked to build up and establish this identity in design and as an artist and creative. Ugh, creative is giving like Instagram bio <laughs> like person in Soho who's like walking around trying to social climb. But as an artist he built himself up and then he um, opens himself up to collaboration um, once he's established so that he can be more playful. And I think again that goes back to like the semblance of like control where he's like wait 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 okay now it's perfect now i can open myself up to collaboration and i think that's really it's just something that i relate to when he was in italy doing all the work to learn and absorb information and then waiting to express and i think that that's like kind of seems to be his history and his like legacy like waiting until he, or not being allowed until he was 16 to engage like popular media um so he's like reading all this literature and, and enjoying the classics and learning about these um really complex things and then like stepping into himself uh, truly i guess while he's like being able to relate to more subversive forms of art that he like also makes so he examines his own thoughts and his past work from all kinds of different angles regularly and i think that that shows up and i think that that shows a, a massive exercise in self-esteem i think self-esteem is not when you're like i have so many cars and clothes and shoes i'm so rich i'm richer than this person i'm better than this person i'm prettier than this person self-esteem is when you're like i like who i am because of who i am period not compared to somebody else, not above somebody else, not I have more than somebody else, not I have more than I used to, not I have, you know what I mean? I look better than I used to because of this. It's literally just like, I love who I am because that's who I am. And I think that his self-expression and his emphasis on adapting his archive and, you know, appreciating his own archive is a massive exercise in like expressing high self-esteem. Like, and I think that that is so valuable, and I think that's something we can all take away from. The point is that it's his bursts of energy. It's his shout. It is Rick Owens' specific shout. It isn't like, um, and it's not to say that he's not inspired by other designers, because he most certainly is, but um, it's not, the point is not like, he's the best right now, he's the hottest right now, he's the coolest right now, he's the richest right now, he's the most popular. It's literally that he is him. He is him period you know he's saying what he wants to say and i think that's something we should all value about ourselves our own archives our own you know pasts and things like that we should be investigating them working to adopt them working to understand them because this is how you work to understand yourself rather than like comparing yourself to other artists and other designers what do you have to say and why do you value it and what would you adopt about it um in the present i think that's really beautiful I also like that he, like I said, he works toward improvement on his own brand that we can all aim higher. I also appreciate that he acknowledges reality. I think this goes back to his like practical sensibilities. He like wants to work toward um, 
working with larger brands and collaborating with larger brands that are working to do better. He said it doesn't happen overnight, which I agree with. And I know it's something really, really difficult for a lot of people uh, who have like really binary ways of thinking to accept that it's just like, oh, well, it's not perfect now, you're canceled. I don't think like that. I don't think any, I don't take things as seriously as I used to when I was younger. And I also don't take things as seriously as people think I do. Like sometimes people come to me and they're like, you know this person is canceled, you know this brand is canceled. And I think things are much more complicated than that now, as I've gotten older and as I've experienced things myself and been traumatized by people's inability to understand the range of the gray area of most experiences. Um, and um, I like that he believes that there is still the power and value in working towards something better every day instead of saying that something is completely dismissed if, it, if it isn't perfect now, especially within the context of reality and fashion. A lot of fashion isn't good. And I don't think that that means that fashion should stop for the time being. I think it means that people should be working toward making it better every day. Um, but that's also not something everybody agrees with. So when he was in Italy, I think he said that he was doing a lot of reading and um, working to learn a lot until he felt like at some point it's just time to stop absorbing and start expressing. And I think that that's also something that really resonates with me. I appreciate people who do a lot to work, a lot of work to learn about themselves and learn about other philosophies and connecting to those ideologies and considering other perspectives constantly and using others' perspectives to shape the way that you have a relationship with yourself and the world rather than seeing what you identify with in the world all the time and um, I don't know I just think it's like kind of a release of control to be open to other people's philosophies about life so again it goes back to like the symbols of control where it's like control but also completely letting go I think I love the concept of someone constructing this ultra serious like strict uh, way of living like where he has this uh, regimen his scheduled regimen where he wakes up works out takes a nap works at this time at this time he dyes his hair jet black always he maintains his body and his health he eats a certain way he lives a sober lifestyle these things take these things take a lot of discipline and maintenance and he does all these things but then he's like oh also, like I'm gonna go to a dance club and also like I'm going to participate in things that are uh, counter culture he's like the saint and the sinner all at once but like to the furthest extreme ends but it's also like that's what reality is like you have this very very pluralized identity that isn't just this singular thing and nobody is just a saint or a sinner he also owns his own brand it's um privately owned and they don't even do their numbers publicly i don't think anymore and because he has a privately owned brand he said he's like i can shut this all down finna delete this app within the weeks that's my favorite threat on the internet finna delete this app within the weeks um but like yeah he, he could shut everything down whenever he wants to and it's all about him and himself and his expression for on a different perspective i was reading jay mccauley bow says men Menswear Revolution. Um, I'm still reading it as always. I'm always revisiting that book. And I was thinking about the importance of male subjectivity in fashion. Jay McCauley Bosted was saying like it's important or like talking about the importance of it not being satirized and it historically being satirized and essentially that men are like goth, men are metrosexual. When men are considering and introspecting about themselves and the way that they construct identity, people are always like that's gay, that's feminine, and that's bad. You should stop doing that. You should signal outwardly that you don't care. This performative male uncaring is so like essential to men's fashion and I think Rick Owens balancing between like this extreme careful consideration for high level construction, bias cut garments, uh, patterning techniques, these ultra light, soft, comfy, cozy, like well made attention to detail based garments. It's not something that you would typically expect of men's fashion. I like that he likens his design process to Lou Reed's music. He says there are minimal chord changes. And I think again, that goes back to respecting and honoring his own archive. Um, I don't know, I just think it all, the, the, that's what all speaks to me and that's why I like to get dressed the way that I do. I felt a deep despair and sorrow, but the desire for joy and resolution was so intense for me when I was developing my personal style and I felt that through Rick Owens' um, collections. I do always feel like there's a shout of wanting to see the good in life and appreciating the beauty that is in life, whether that's like the nature tones in his work or the use of leathers and animal skins and textiles to, you know, honor the beauty that comes naturally from this earth. I, I just think that I felt a deep despair and sorrow, rejection, isolation, um, 
dehumanization, torment that he seems to have experienced and expresses through some of his design. But I also felt the joy in being able to share that um, and see value in that and um, create disharmony and disrupt things from your own perspective um, because that's what you want to do. Um, and see beauty where it's not always like forced upon you and it's not so like obvious and so literal but also again it's not a manifesto it's just a suggestion like that that part of it is just so like real to me like I'm making this whole video and I as soon as I turn the camera off I'm like it's not that serious and I'm literally gonna go to the coffee shop and just like hang out like it's not that serious also like it is that serious because this is a video that I'm choosing to make and I'm talking about one specific designer but I could literally do this about like why I loved going to forever 21 when I was in middle school or why I loved going to limited to when I was in middle school. I can make a, an equally long video about the depth and impact that it had on me. Um, and I think that that's also an important part of it. Like everything is that serious and nothing is that serious. And like that's like the beauty of life that all of this is to say and it doesn't matter. Like and nobody has to care that I said any of this. And you know, I don't even know if I want to upload this anymore, but we'll see. I'm sure I will because I'm trying to be consistent. But um, yeah. That was, um, that's like the first episode of why I wear what I wear and I hope that like shed some insight on like why I have value for some of these designers and why I don't, I always talk about like I wouldn't spend money with a designer if I don't know about them, like that's what I know about him, I don't know the man's like inner workings or day to day. I hope that was clear and I hope that that was understandable and hopefully you can understand why I like his clothes, why they resonate with me and why I get dressed how I get dressed when I wear Rick Owens. Um, thanks guys for watching. I don't know what else to say. I'm nervous.